Hey. So this is a story of how my ex-girlfriend, Samantha Brown, died. Uh, Sam Brown, I called her Sam. She was a head turner. She was fine. She looked good to men and women, okay? She was very charismatic. She had a dynamic personality. She was in the army. Um, I think she was in the reserves. She had all kinds of Taekwondo black belts and I mean, um, you know, trophies and stuff like that. Um, she was uh, a lot of fun. She definitely had a commanding, confident type of personality. So I met her at a bar and we started talking. I was shy, I was new to homosexuality and um, she was not shy. <laughs> Um, she was one of those good looking type of people where like you're shocked that they're looking at you. So anyway, the day we decided to be a couple, it was a couple of weeks in, very early on, hadn't done anything, you know, just talked on the phone a lot. And we went out for a date. We spent the day together. We were just running from bar to bar, to hotel bar, playing pool, you know, just running up and down Fells Point, having a good time in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's like a strip of bars. Uh, well, it was at that time. I don't know what it's like now. I haven't been back to Baltimore in a long time. But at that time, it was just, Fells Point was just a bunch of bars. Um, so that's what we pretty much did all day long. We were drinking all day long. I mean, I guess that was indicative of the, of the soldier in her. Um, she could drink. So it was way more alcohol that I was ever accustomed to. I was just trying to hang on and hold on. She was so much fun. She was like a whirlwind of a person, you know, so um, at the end of the night, we got some food and we went back to her place. She lived in the basement. Um, it was like an apartment and then her family lived upstairs and um, so we went back to her house, her place, and we were sitting down to eat. And the only thing she had to drink in her refrigerator downstairs was beer. I was tired of all the alcohol. I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, Sam, do you have any uh, anything else to drink besides beer? And she was like, yeah, um, it's a Coke in the refrigerator upstairs. Well, I felt uncomfortable going upstairs because this was all brand new. She had just asked me to be her girlfriend that day. And I she hadn't introduced me to her family yet. And so, you know, I was like, well, um, can you get it for me? And she was like, go on upstairs and get the coke out of the refrigerator and so I was like Sam I don't I don't feel comfortable doing that she was like you either gonna go upstairs and get that coke out the refrigerator or you gonna sit there and be thirsty <laughs> she was like I hate it when somebody don't trust what I say <sighs> so I was really, really young. I was like 20s, barely like 
20. How old was I? I don't even, I might not even been 20. I might've been 19. I don't know, 19 or 20. Um, of course that wasn't okay. I see that now, but I didn't know that then. So anyway, now I felt like I had to prove to her that I trusted her. Um, and so I go upstairs and her sister and her sister's daughter are sitting in the living room. The basement stairs led up to the kitchen. But, you know, from the kitchen, I could see them sitting on the couch. So I said, hi, Sam uh, sent me upstairs to get a soda out of the refrigerator. Is it okay? And, and, you know, they just don't say anything. So I just get the soda and scurry back on downstairs. <laughs> and so we're sitting downstairs and she's like, okay, now see. And so I was like, oh, okay. All right. So we continue eating. Next thing you know, Sam's mom um, knocks on the door to the basement and she uh, called for Sam and Sam was like, you know, yeah, you know, what's what's going on? And so her mom was like, you, you have company? And she said, yeah, what's going on? And she was like, oh, no, never mind, never mind. We'll talk about it later. So now Sam is up and she's on her way upstairs. She was like, no, we're going to talk about it right now. And you're going to tell me what's going on. <laughs> Talking to her mom. So Sam goes upstairs and then the next thing you know, there's arguing. <sighs> Who I send upstairs to get something out of my refrigerator in my house is none of your goddamn business. If you don't like it, get the fuck out my house. Da -da -da, take your four kids. You got four kids. You got four baby daddies. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, she's going off. And next thing you know, there's some rearranging of furniture. <laughs> it's some fighting going on upstairs. I'm sitting downstairs in the basement. All of this stuff is going on on top of my head. I'm like, oh my God. Gosh, you know, what the hell? Next thing you know, it's all quiet. And then her mother comes running downstairs. She pays me absolutely no attention. You know what I mean? Like she's not worried about me at all. She gets on the phone because they had uh, different lines upstairs and downstairs. She gets on the phone and she calls somebody. And she's like, yeah, uh, Cynthia Stab Sam. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. And she was like, okay, okay. I'll, I'll call an ambulance. I'll call an ambulance. I go upstairs and Samantha is sitting on the floor with her legs out in front of her crossed and she had her arm up on a chair like she stumbled over to that place and she, you know, sat down. And there was a knife, a long kitchen knife, big old kitchen knife. 
big kid tonight. Protruding from her chest. Right into her heart. No. Oh. No. No, I'm remembering wrong. The knife was on the floor next to her. There was a cut in her chest that was like this long from that knife. The knife had been sunk into her chest about four inches. So it was, there was a towel on her chest with blood from the wound where she had been stabbed and she was sitting there And she, I ran to her and I put my arms around her. And her eyes were fluttering. And when she took a breath, it was gurgle sounds. It was gurgling, like like blood was was in her lungs. And she was, you know trying to take breaths and I'm just begging her Sam hold on please 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 the ambulance is on its way please hold on please don't leave don't don't leave don't don't leave please don't leave don't leave don't leave don't leave and I heard her take her last breath She died in my arms. The paramedics got there. And of course they could not find a pulse. They, they did CPR on her anyway for a little while. And then they um they moved her, you know, put her in the ambulance. They pronounced her dead and they put her in the ambulance. And then the police came. I wanted everybody's information. Yeah, that was um, terrible. I couldn't sleep for so long after that. I would drink a big old 40 ounce every night just to go to bed and to try to sleep. I would think that I saw her in public. Like, I'd be moving, you know, in a crowd of people and I would swear that, you know, I saw the back of her head, like it, like it, that might be her. It, I knew she was dead. I knew she was, had died in my arms, but I still didn't want it to be so, it's crazy, right? For a long time after Sam, I was messed up in the head. Excuse me. I was no good in a relationship. Just cause no matter who I was with, she wasn't Sam. So it just, 
my love couldn't, I couldn't, I, my, I felt like I didn't have a heart. Like my heart was, had kind of died inside me. So I didn't, I felt like my heart was dead. And I, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't muster up love. Um, yeah, so I was traumatized for a while after that. Mm. My life is full of so much trauma. Good grief. <laughs> Thank God for God and therapy and hypnotherapy because uh, I can look back on this stuff and it doesn't it doesn't tear me up and it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt anymore. These are things that I survived and I'm still here. Uh, but trust me, I have been through years of therapy and now I just found something that was just absolutely amazing. Rapid transformational therapy in um, Mind Valley. Like this is not, I, I don't have an affiliate link. This is, they're not sponsoring this video or anything. But when I tell you, God led me to Mind Valley. God led me to Mind Valley. That rapid transformational therapy and the um, the Silva Mind Control. Oh, I have so much, so much of that contaminated negative self-talk that's, you know, just from childhood and all that kind of stuff, just mean things that were said to me by parents or whatever like that. It'll just, you know, be playing as background noise in your mind while you're going through life and dealing with people and, and your current relationships and stuff and it really has no place. Like, all that is gone. Do you understand me? Gone. And years of therapy did not do that. But 30 days of that rapid transformational therapy did that mm -hmm. did that um it's by marissa pierce she's awesome she knows she knows what she's doing she knows what she's doing because that thing oh boy it helped me so much she's it's um it's called rtt therapy for um, the abundant life and she teaches how you can have abundance in your relationships, you know, abundance in love, abundance in health, abundance in wealth, abundance in joy, you know, um, and you can have all these things all at the same time. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think she's right. <laughs> I think everything she is saying is all right. Let me tell you. So, yeah, um, I've got all these jacked up stories and, you know, a lot of you might be thinking, oh my God, clutch my pearls, is Brandy okay? How can she not be crazy after all of this stuff? You'll be surprised at the resilience of the human heart and the human soul, and the human spirit and the human mind. You'll be surprised what you can overcome, especially with the help of God, you know, and God, he'll be leading you and guiding you. And you don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know nothing about him. <laughs> and he'll be all up in your life. Just, just you know, protecting you from this and protecting you from that. And leading you here and leading you there. You have no idea that he's all over you just because, you know, just because you don't know him doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. And that he didn't mean for you to come into this earth on purpose, you know. Um, that's a whole nother subject, a whole nother thing. But, yeah. Uh, it does take the spiritual working in tandem with the natural, you know. Yeah, you can pray the demons away, but then you still have to do work in the natural to heal your mind, to renew your mind, and, you know, heal your body. All kinds of things happen to you from trauma. You'd be surprised the effects of trauma on your body, sicknesses and diseases and and um things that happen to your body when you have unresolved trauma in you anyway check out the link for my audiobook 
down below, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. I used to be gay. God delivered me from homosexuality. I was gay for some years and I wanted to contribute to heterosexual relationships. I wanted to give men all the sexual techniques that I found to make it easy for me to elicit multiple orgasms from my female lovers. So I give step-by-step -step instructions, you know, so kind of if we can bring some spice into that bedroom, might make them hard days a little bit easier. You know what I mean? Y'all might want to come together after that argument. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, but you can find the link to my, my Koji uh, where the book is being sold. It's an audio book. It's a good listen. You will be entertained. Uh, but you hopefully you'll also start having a little bit more fun in that bedroom if you want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's all for this one. Y'all take care.